Welcome to the agency. I am your host, Agent M. Bay, and this is AGTR Studios. Welcome you here for this episode of Off Topic. Today I plan on discussing building a niche or a creative style. Uh, I'm gonna use myself as a reference for a lot of it. Uh, but we'll talk about you know some uh, historical references um, and all kinds of things. Let's see which way we go with it. Um, I probably mentioned some semblance of it in my previous videos um, and how it is that I kind of created my style. Uh, I'll kind of get into some of the whoops, grab this up. Uh, I'll kind of get into some of the uh, challenges I faced. Uh, and things that kind of inspired me uh, to, to create the art that I created or create the, the style that I created. So, for one, I just had a burning desire to do it. Um, it was something that played in my mind and when I started seeing more artists um, that, that had a very unique style, something that made me recognize their artwork in a split second, I said I want that. Um, one reference I can say is uh, Mikey Green, Nightmare Mikey. Uh, he was probably one of the first close examples of that when I was in undergrad at Hampton University. Um, and, and keeping up with him, he was about two years ahead of me in, in the art department there. Uh, but in keeping up with what it was that he was doing and the brand that he was building, I mean, his, his illustrative style uh, that transferred into his uh, Digital and and uh, painted, you know, on canvas works. I and then, you know I always could recognize his works. And what really struck me was in how I you know kind of viewed artwork more frequently these days. Um, and even then, like be that scrolling on a phone and kind of or even on Instagram scrolling and seeing images. When I was able to scroll and then stop and scroll back because I saw something that I easily recognized. I started to that started to play around in my mind and say, hey, that's I want that. That's something that I want. I want to be able to I want people to be able to see it and say, Mensa did that or say that person was influenced by Mensa or MB. Uh that whatever. We'll get into that later. So in that regard, uh it was something, again, it was a burning desire for myself. And I didn't necessarily have anybody, I, I, I'm not wanting to generally ask people how to do a thing. I would just try to, I would work my hardest to try to figure it out myself. And in many cases, I felt as if I already knew the answers. I just had to push myself to do the work that I knew was necessary to, to get it done. And so let's talk about some of the work, right? Because you know what I'm, you know what, what traits I have. Everybody's not going to have, but some of these things you can just do based on the work, right? How much you get at it. So one thing that always played in my mind. I mentioned this in other videos, so I won't go too deeply into it. But one thing that played in my uh, mind a lot was uh, I referenced like Aunt Ernie Barnes in one of my videos, and Ernie Barnes' figures. Were always elongated, and um, they were used to see them in a good, to show good times, like JJ's paintings, and good times were Ernie, Ernie Barnes paintings. So, so uh, you know, and the really elongated limbs and the activity of the, the the movement of the limbs. You know, it wasn't just a static figure with lengthy limbs. There was you know ball players and showing the real. All of that, right? And so I, that was something that really always stuck with me, and uh, it was something I wanted to attempt to try. You know, it's like how can I c create proportionate bodies with elongated limbs? And uh, I didn't really to do that. So in trying to build a niche, right? That's what we're supposed to be talking about. Uh, mine began with the neck. I felt like if any part of the body I could stretch or elongate, I was like, I could stretch the neck a little bit. I've seen enough examples of it 
to where if I take the neck just a little bit out of proportion, it won't look so crazy, but it would be, you know, just outside of the realm of realistic, right? And uh, surrealism is, was, has been a, a big inspiration. So I want to, again, I'm, I'm mentioning all these artists and art movements um, because that, that plays a, lot, a part in building that niche, right? So a lot of these artists that I talk about or the movements I talk about are kind of based on them having their niche style, the creative style. So with those influences, I continue to create. Now connected, you know, that elongation with surrealism and you know things existing just out of the realm of our physical realities, right? And so I began creating uh, sketches and drawings in which, oh good, there's already one on there, so I think I, I might show this in the last video, but, or one of the videos, but, so, this stack of sketchbooks here is here for that reason. Um, and other than just being a stack of sketchbooks, they got some weight to them. And not just that, this is a very important sketchbook, by the way, but um, this one here has been with me, you see the name written on the side there, Mensa. I'm pretty sure that's my middle school hand. So I've had this sketchbook since middle school. And if you go into it, you'll see my middle school sketches. But because there were still pages left in it, it got used. And so there's actually a good example of very early uh, MBA art up until very serious MBA art in this sketchbook. So another very important sketchbook. But just to say that I have sketchbooks that have been in my life for quite a while. I got another one over there that's been around since high school. Um, it's about the same size as this one on top. So what this stack of sketchbooks represents is how I built my style or my niche. And so even though, you know, you might come here thinking uh, that I could tell you if you start doing this or that, you'll build your style. But just like in other disciplines, and I relate myself and my works to all the kinds of disciplines, uh, mostly you know the, the various arts, so uh, performers, uh, musicians, things of that nature, um, people who, who kind of brand themselves with a particular style. Uh, it's it's what I recognize in those same disciplines is it's the work that they put in, the things that are done behind you know closed doors, the things that are done not in you know in the dark that eventually come to light. So when people see my paintings, they say, oh man, what kind of person, somebody said this to me before, like, what kind of person you gotta be to think of this, to have the necks going eh, all over the place? And you know, I responded, I can't remember how I responded, um, but it was just like, you know, it, it, it's, it didn't just come out of any nowhere, you know, it, it really just came out of working and letting the work over time develop into it. You know, that at some point, some part of the work decided that it wanted to go this way as opposed to that. And I can't say that my work is based off of uh, my illustrative background, right? Drawing sketchbooks was always my favorite thing growing up, um, you know, since a, since a type. So drawing in a sketchbook is like the first love and passion of mine figures, comic book, or anime, most of myself was, was a lot of that. So a lot of that inspiration comes from that. Just drawing a figure in general comes from that. And then uh, getting, again, getting older and starting to understand and take, you know, classes, going to school for art and understanding various art te uh, techniques and mediums, learning how to apply all those different things into, you know, to, to, to combinations where I'm painting using different techniques and materials to create, you know, a, a very unique style of mine. So I, I blend a lot of different things. So uh, again, building a niche. Uh, somebody like a Picasso, if you look at some of Picasso's early works, right? Picasso, Picasso's background didn't begin in Cubism, right? Um, you can almost guarantee that any most artists that you uh, are familiar with have some version of a formal you know, art education or background, whether it be in a school system setting or 
you know, a mentor that taught them the, the basics, right? You hear that in anything, learn the basics, learn the foundation of anything, and then learn to start breaking the rules. And that's something that, you know, most of the art movements do. There's only art that didn't break rules was the, was the art that set the rules, right? So 